Hello everyone, welcome to a video that I think is going to be very useful to arcade enthusiasts as well as shmup players all around the world, which is how to beautifully capture arcade hardware. And of course if you follow my channel and follow my content, you'll probably know why I think this is very important. It's because I think quality video capture and more video availability of replays and super plays and just gameplay in general is very important for the health of the genre. I think the days of us just saying, oh, just write numbers on a screen or just provide a snapshot of the end screen, I think those days should be put behind us and we should start moving forward to embracing a video standard for score verification. I think this is going to become very important because as we have seen, <laughs> there, um, people lie. People make crap up. Uh, Pericles says he has all these records that aren't legit. And ironically, the way he was figured out was through his video captures. So if we went on the old system of, okay, just write your scores and we'll believe them, um, he would have no reason to, we'd have nothing to dispute, right? Whereas when you see sketchy stuff in a video capture, you, you can double check that, you can, you know, there's some point of evidence. Another cheater was found this exact same way, where the dude had like obvious splices in his videos. It was like, okay, what's going on here? And so I think quality video captures is going to be very important moving forward. And I've also talked about the old standard of the JHA method of the arcade operator just walks over and says, oh, okay, you played the credit, it's all good. That has its own problems too with like the Dodonpachi scoring glitch where um, JHA cannot tell what you did during the run. They can't differ dif differentiate different scoring categories or anything like that. And so... I think the speedrunning community has shown that using a video standard is just the most uh, effective way of verifying gameplay and verifying records. And so this is something I want to happen, help happen for shmups. And I remember in a year and a half ago when I was talking about this in that uh, thread post on the farm, and I'll have a video about my thoughts on the farm pretty soon, if it's not obvious how I, how I feel about them. But And I got a ton of backlash and heat. Because people were, I remember one really salty comment, I think the guy deleted it, it was just like, well, what are you going to do, come over to my house and video me playing the game with your camera? Like, uh, you know, he's really pissed off about the thought of having to capture his arcade hardware. And the thing about it is, so uh, my empathy for this is not very high, because, for instance, I am not a super well-off person myself. I'm not poor, but I'm not balling out in, with the big money, right? And yet I'm able to achieve this, and I actually don't have a huge investment in arcade hardware. All I have are some PGM bootlegs and a 200 or like a $100 PGM. So I'm in arcade hardware for a total of $500, but I still think it is worthwhile to use this capturing setup. And not only that, but not only will this capturing setup help you with your arcade hardware, but also if you ever want to capture console stuff, you want to capture 360 or you want to capture your PS4 gameplay at higher quality than uh, you know what's available. This setup is just really robust. You can use it for a lot of different things. So I feel like this is a pretty useful toolkit regardless of what you're going to do if you're just using arcade only or if you end up using it with consoles or other different types of gameplay. And so just to start off this video down here, this is just me, sh me showing my bootleg PGMs. They're 80 bucks a piece. If you see eBay listings for them for $200, don't buy them. They're, you're just getting ripped off. Um, I have a whole video about this. Um, they're, they should be around 80 bucks a piece directly from the Chinese maker and all that. I have no idea if you can still get that stuff with what's going on. And also just a bit of a warning for you. Um, some of these are not, you know, these are bootlegs, okay? So uh, my boy Kiwi ended up getting a hold of some that were dead on arrival which really sucks and I feel really bad for him for that. Mine all work but I have no idea, zero idea how uh, reliable they all are, right? I don't know what the failure rate on these bootlegs are. So you're taking a bit of a gamble but 80 bucks, you know, like I think it's worth a, I worth, I think it's worth a shot personally but you, you never know what you're gonna get. So just keep that in mind. And this is just my Extron. This is what I use to convert computer gameplay onto my CRT. This is how I'm able to play Dodonpachi on my standard definition CRT with this bad boy here. A very awesome piece of hardware I'll have to do a video on at some point. But anyway, we'll go down and see the 
capture itself. So the first thing that you need to invest in is a quality super gun. So that's just the PGM right there. The super gun is this thing attached down here and we'll get a better look at it in a second. Uh, this is the power cable. Okay, so here we go. So this super gun is the one I recommend. If you don't own a super gun and you're asking Mark, which one do I get? My recommendation is this one. It's the Retro Electronic or something like that. Um, I'll put a link for it so you'll find it. And I guess they have two different models now. I have no idea what the other model is capable of doing. But the one I have, I just recommend the one I have. It's the one that's black and has Ryu throwing a fireball on it. That's when you know it's the right one. Um, yeah, I'll just go over a little bit of the parts here just to explain what they do. Um, that's the power supply. You can actually use an old computer power supply. Another thing I like about this super gun is it seems to be very versatile with what power supplies it can recommend and handle. So basically, you can most likely just throw an old computer su power supply at it. You know, I got this computer for like $10 at a thrift store and ripped out the power supply, and there you go. And then here we have the output for the, the inputs. The output for the inputs, that's kind of weird, but that's what it is. So this is where you connect your arcade stick and your buttons. If you're you know, going directly to the cab, this is where you connect those. Or I have another piece of equipment that allows me to use a 360 or a PS3 arcade stick without any sort of extra lag, which is really cool. And then this right here is important. So this is where you're going to connect your arcade monitor. So I'm assuming most people watching this who are interested in this probably have a cabinet and have a you know PCB and all those sorts of things. Um, this is where you're going to connect your arcade monitor. And what's really cool about this super gun is that you can play on your monitor while capturing on the OSSC. That's why this is cool. Because let's say you don't want to play on a modern display, like you don't want to play on a FreeSync monitor or a gaming monitor, you still can use this capturing setup and still play on your cabinet's arcade monitor, which is really, really good. So that's where your cabinet monitor goes. And then the big one here is this bad boy right here. This is the RGB SCART port. And what's cool, again, what's cool about this super gun, and if you have a super gun already, you're just going to want to check to see what features your super gun has and doesn't has, because it has and does not, because it might affect how you're going to set up your capturing setup. What's really cool about this super gun is that it outputs the audio over this RGB SCART. So not only is it sending the video, it's sending the audio as well, which is very, very convenient, as you'll see moving forward. So this is just a, another look at the super gun. Another quick tip I have is uh, if you have a super gun like this, the coin button's right there, and so it's a pain to get up and hit the coin button all the time. But I figured out if you just put your games in free play mode you never have to worry about that so all my carts are in free play mode so I never have to use that coin button I don't have to get up and do that another word of warning is uh, with the PGM especially is one of these is a headphone jack I think is this one or this one one of these two for the love of God do not actually plug headphones into this jack I about blew out my ears I'm not kidding I had the PGM connected and I was like oh I want to hear if it's working so I plugged in my headphone and then I turned it on and I about blew an eardrum. It was so loud. So yeah, do not do not do that. Um, you can adjust the volume on your PGM. So I would turn your PGMs, or I guess on your, I don't know if PCBs have this ability, but turn your volume all the way down and then slowly raise it up if you use these earphone jacks because otherwise you're going to blow out your ears. Just a little health safety tip there. And then this piece of hardware, I just wanted to show this off. This is the undamped USB decoder. And what's cool about it is it allows you to play with a PS3 or an Xbox 360 arcade stick, so the Brooks board if you have that, without any extra input lag. It decodes it and sends it to the Super Gun, which is really cool. I bought this on Paradise Arcade Shop. That's the only place I know that has them. I do not know if they're still in stock or not. You, you never know, but if you, they're not, just keep checking if you want to get one of these because they're definitely worth it if you're having a similar setup to mine.
If you have a cab, you don't need that, obviously, because you just use your cab controls and stuff. Now, that's just showing where those connect. And then the last piece of advice I want to talk about, the only issue with this super gun, and it's not truly an issue, but it is if you're an American, is that it does not have any sort of ability natively to output S video to, you know, standard definition CRTs. Like I have a massive Sony Trinitron right next to me, and it only takes S video. It doesn't take SCART. But I know all you European players, you all have SCART, so this is never going to be an issue for you. But strictly for my American brethren, you have if you want to play on an S video CRT, you need to get this extra adapter thing right here um, that will turn it into S video and the video quality is okay it's not super great um, so that's why I actually play thanks to the OSS you actually play on a like on a gaming monitor is how I play my PGM I don't actually play it on my CRT that often just because I, I think it looks better on the monitor and um, the lag isn't there thanks to the C OSSC you know minimal lag and all that kind of good stuff but on occasion I will play it on my monitor and this is how I do it are on my CRT. So that's just a little bit of a shout out to the American people who may run up against that issue. So the second piece of equipment that is definitely the magic ingredient here is the OSSC. So this piece of equipment is pretty famous at this point or pretty well known. So shout out to them for um, you know making it into the public consciousness a little more. So what is this thing? This thing is an upscaler like the Frame Meister. However, unlike the Frame Meister, it does not add any lag. And unlike the Frame Meister, it's not absurdly expensive. So um, if you have a Frame Meister, you probably don't need an OSSC, especially if you're just playing on your monitor, on your arcade monitor, then it really doesn't matter. But I'm assuming most of you do not have a Frame Meister. And so I would recommend getting this instead of a Frame Meister just because price and because... Um, I, I like how it has no lag, and it seems very versatile, and it's always updating. It just seems like a really great investment overall. I really like this thing. And so I'll just go over what it is a little bit. Another thing I want to clarify is that when you're buying the OSSC, if my memory serves correctly, like you have to pay extra for the remote. And me being the cheapskate I am, I was like, am I really going to pay extra for a remote? Why don't I just use the buttons on it and stuff I mean I'm not I'm not so lazy I can't get up and hit the buttons well it turns out the remote does a lot of shit that you can't do on the buttons at least from my knowledge so you have to you have to buy the remote just buy the remote and make your life easier another thing to keep in mind is I don't know how many old aftermarket ones there are of these but if you're buying um, an aftermarket one you know so not a brand new one make sure you are buying one with an HDMI output I remember some of the original models did not have an HDMI output. Instead, they had, you know, like DVI-D or something like that. And then they had, which, you know, isn't that big of a deal, but then the audio was not included in that video signal. So then they had extra audio outputs. That is going to be a mess when it comes to capturing. I'm, I'm telling you now. So just do not buy that version. Do not do it. Because you want, the big part is, you want your audio to come over your SCART cable, which the... Supergun I recommend is able to do and then you want your OSSC to put that audio out through the HDMI cable. You don't want to separate out your audio because capturing it and stuff can become a massive pain depending on your capture setup otherwise and uh, it's going to become more and more of a pain because most capture cards and stuff now just accept HDMI without much without much external audio or the external audio isn't as good and stuff. That's why I just recommend getting the HDMI output version. And yes, another thing to keep in mind when it comes to OSSC is... So when it starts up, it's not going to have any sort of signal because you actually have to hit this button or use a remote to switch the channels. So you're going to switch to your AV1 channel, which is your SCAR channel. And then it will automatically line double it, which for some people, depending on your capture card, might be good enough. But I would recommend actually at least the line tripling. So the footage you see in this video is actually line tripled. So it's in 720p essentially. The reason why I didn't do 
1080p because the OSC set, OSSC can actually go above 1080p a little bit. But the problem is, is that my capture card just could not handle it. The only signal it could handle comfortably was the 3x mode. So that's an, the, the next part of the equation that gets a little bit more complicated, your capture cards. But overall, yeah, get the OSSC. There are alternatives to the OSSC, I have to point out. I do believe there's the Retro Tink, and that thing is pretty good from what I hear. However, I have no hands-on experience with it, so I have no idea how informed you know the crit the critiques are and stuff like that personally because I haven't got my hands on it but I do think just as a personal recommendation getting the OSSC is still the better move because this thing is very robust and you can connect a lot of different stuff to it and it has a lot of different features and it's always updating I just think it's a very good investment overall and actually what's cool about it is you don't have to just use it for your RGB SCART arcade hardware I can use it for my PS2 as well. So when I play DOJ on the PS2, I can use uh, this thing or Gradius 5. So this thing is very useful for not just... You can use this to play on modern monitors again without any lag. So it's very useful for even if you're not capturing stuff, if you want to play Gradius 5 on a modern monitor and have it look good or, ha or DOJ white label on the PS2. So I just think it's a really good investment overall. It does a lot of different stuff. So that's the second part of the equation. So step one, get yourself a solid super gun that can output RGB SCART, preferably with the audio on the RGB SCART. Secondly, get yourself an OSSC or an equivalent-ish um, upscaler of some kind. If you're wanting to play as you record on a modern monitor, I'll just say get the OSSC. If you play on your arcade monitor and uh, just use this to record separately, then there's all kinds of different things you could use, but uh, I can't verify how good they are or not because I don't own them. So that's why I recommend the OSSC, just because I think it's a very, very solid piece of equipment. So let's get to the third ingredient, which is the capture card. And oh boy, is this part fun or... This was the part of the setup that actually gave me the most trouble. You would think it would be the super gun, and you would think it would be the OSSC, right? Because they're pretty complicated... You know, there's a lot going on on both of those. But no, it was the stupid capture card that was driving me absolutely nuts. So the capture card you see here, the one that I own, which I kind of have mixed feelings towards, to be honest, is the Elgato HD60S. So the thing about this capture card is, as you can tell from the capture of the right of the screen, it does work. However, it is a pain in the butt. Because at first I tried to use it with OBS, and it does not play nice with OBS. I think intentionally it does not play nice with OBS. So I had to download its own special capturing software and use that. That's that's kind of, I don't know if I recommend this card. I can verify that it works, but you have to use this this other software to get it to work correctly. Because what was happening was it was appearing in o OBS and you know it was recording. But it had this horrible stuttering issue where the gameplay would stutter and stutter. And it, it looked it looked visual, like if you paused it, it looked okay. But if it went in motion, it looked awful because it had this weird stutter. So that's why I'm not sure if I can totally recommend this capture card. But it will work. Um, there are other ones that if you go on the um, OSSC website and you just look up compatible capture cards, there's not like a nice list that is comprehensive and everything but you can see different people's comments and examples of capture cards that worked for them it looked like the Aver media ones seem to work well so you might double check that all else fails this thing does work but it's just um you have to use its own proprietary software instead of using obs and i'm sure there's probably a way to get obs to behave itself a little better but it's again that's kind of a complicated process and so i can't fully recommend that as the easiest way to go about things so if you don't have a capture card I'd say start looking around the OSSC website for recommendations as to which one would work the best it looks like the Avir media ones were recommended and seem to work well also this capture card could not handle 1080p which was really disappointing to me so the capture you see is 720p which is still way better than most of what we see but if you want that 1080p 
glory, you're going to want a different capture card than this one. The thing about this one is it's pretty pretty in inexpensive and pretty well supported, so there there is those there are those positives. So, to end this, let's go over and this is just me this is just footage of the gameplay on the monitor as it's happening, right? So, let's slow down, but so this is uh I like I said I'm playing on the arcade on the uh LCD monitor. I'm not actually playing on my CRT. What's also nice about the OSSC is you can add in a nice scanline effect, which you can see in the captured footage. And so this is just some some vintage uh, camera style footage. And I just wanted you to see the comparison, okay, of how good it looks direct captured versus, I would say, fairly well done uh, off camera capture, right? The lighting is still a little funny, but it looks better because it's coming off a modern LCD rather than coming off a CRT, which has like rolling and all types of like desyncing going on in a lot of people's videos. So anyway, let's summarize this then. Step one, get yourself a super gun that is able to output RGB SCART. And hopefully with audio over the RGB SCART. This super gun is the one I recommend. If you have one that can already do that, then you might be good to go. You don't need that. Step two, get an OSSC or an upscaler. The other uh, one that I've heard about is the RetroTink, which is cheaper. So maybe you get the RetroTink, but I don't know if the RetroTink can do 720p or not. Uh, it's had different changes. I know originally it couldn't. Look into that if you're interested, but I would just recommend getting an OSSC. And you have to buy the remote, even though they charge extra for that. Step three, get a compatible capture card. Um, you're going to want... There's This is interesting because there's lots of different options, right? And um, certain ones are going to be dependent on how strong your computer is too, right? Like, for, to run one of these, you do need to have a decent computer. But I do know there are capture cards... I like I have one, an old Chinese one. I'll, I'll throw a picture of it on this section that just records directly to USB. So that actually works, but the only issue with it is that it will not output the video to a monitor. The pass-through doesn't work on it. So for, the, for that one, I actually would have to play on my CRT and then capture it separately. So that's important to keep in mind as well. So those are the three things that you need to capture arcade gameplay effectively. If I price that out, the Retro Electronic is around $120 if I remember correctly. The OSSC is around $170 if I remember correctly. So that's around $300 there. And then your capture card, that one can vary widely as far as what you're going with. Um, but my Elgato, I think it was around $100. Bucks. So you're looking around $400 to $500 dollars, um, to get this capture set up working correctly and having it look nice. Which again, you know, is a lot of money. But at the same time, I feel like, again, if you're in the top tier where you're owning all this expensive arcade hardware, I think it's just part of the cost of uh, doing business, right? Um, it, just, it just seems a little bit wasteful to have such amazing hardware but not be able to capture it correctly. So... That's my recommendation. For hopefully this video can uh, help people go in the right direction. And I just want to show that it is possible to have really quality captures at a somewhat affordable price, like 400 bucks. That's not that's not out of hand when you start getting into the realm of arcade hardware, right? Where a single game is like three can be up to two grand and stuff. So thanks so much for tuning in. And before I go, let me thank my patrons. Dingo, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Brian Shiver, Double Vision, Depths 20XX, Dunpeel 2064, EC 2151, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Gus, Kiwi, and I know Retro Shmupper has arcade hardware, I'm, so I'm curious what he thinks about this video. Gus, Kiwi, Jacob Spring, Jake Ryan, Joe Angelo, John, K, Quentin, Maz, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Okla Kugels, Omkal, Rhysosis, Zagumo, Young Money, Sui, and Plasmo, both of them also have arcade hardware. Yutakaya, Bohoi TV 100, Malays, Meher Calendrian. Thanks for watching.